Welcome, everybody, to the Security Guy and the CIA Spy Show podcast, where we are keeping you on top of what is new and ahead of what is next at all times on all things security, tech, and digital literacy. Knowing that when good people like you want to make sure that their money, their family, and their business is safe and secure from attackers, hackers, and thieves, or you just want to make sure your tech is running smoothly, my name is Robert Siciliano. I am the security guy, and along with my co-host, Peter Wormka, who is a real and retired United States CIA spy, we will give you every single tool, tip, tactic, and skill that you need to fight the bad guy and keep your physical and digital life secure, worry less, and even make you happier. This podcast will help you breathe easier with less stress and a greater sense of well-being. So let's get at it. Whoa, and welcome to the Security Guy and the CIA Spy Pod Broadcast. I am Robert Siciliano, and this is... Peter Warmka. Hi, Robert. How are you? Doing pretty good, Peter. So, Peter, you are the CIA Spy. Tell me just a little bit about your background. Well, I want to say former... CIA spy because I don't actually, I retired from the agency about 10 years ago, but I had a 20 plus career with them and spent most of that time overseas uh, collecting intelligence uh, for policymakers back in Washington, D.C. So I had to breach the security of the organizations that uh, had this information, which I was trying to collect. And uh, now today I carry that over in the work I do for the private sector and helping them to understand the threats that come in from the outside that are trying to to breach their their IT network. So still doing the same work, but I'm on the opposite side of the fence this time. So now when you say overseas, right? Like, you know, I think overseas, I'm thinking like, I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Greece. Like I want to go to Spain. I mean, were you in like Europe or were you in like, you know, Black Hawk Down? Where were you at? Oh, I mean, I, how, how sexy do you want this this podcast to sound? I'll be honest with you. I was living in some pretty pretty nice areas. I mean, I spent a lot of time in Latin America. That's always been my forte. But then I I lived uh, in for a period of time in Europe. But I traveled from there. I traveled into the Middle East, into Asia. But fortunately, I was able to live in places that were relatively nice for my family because my family accompanied me uh, while I was working overseas. So Middle East, Asia, and what? Central America. Yeah, and of course, through all Europe. I've been through all of Europe. Speak one, more than one language? Uh, I speak some English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. Oh, really? You speak four languages? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So you really are the real deal. Well, I mean, it's, it's really, really, in my opinion, the only way to be effective. You're more effective if you, if you can speak the language of the individuals who you are say, you know, uh, targeting and dealing with a, and not just the language on a basic level, but really to a level that uh, you understand the mentality you're able to also, you know, make jokes in that language. I mean, you ingratiate yourself with the people and, and that really opens a lot of doors because they think of uh, many times overseas, they think of Americans as, oh, they only speak English. They can't speak our language. But when you really try to speak their language, uh, they're so much more receptive. And so it's always been very good for me. And, and good for our country. Mm -hmm. So you 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 use a specific word when you mentioned the people that you are working. You mentioned you said the word targeted or targeting. What what does targeting like the targets? What does that mean? Well, okay, uh, this is the same thing that works with like security today. If you're looking to penetrate an organization for whatever reason it may be, you're going to be almost always targeting insiders individuals who have access yeah. to information inside that organization, whether it's access to files, access to negotiations or discussions at the boardroom, or access to the IT network. So these were the individuals that I was targeting when I was in my former career at the CIA, targeting individuals who worked in particular organizations uh, for both the government as well as, as uh, private sector who had access to information of interest to us. So now when you would target someone, how would you, I guess, approach them, build that relationship, get that access? Like what would, what, how, how would, how would, what is the process of targeting? Well, that's a very good question. And there's a couple of different ways. It can be a target of opportunity where all of a sudden you come across this individual who might be from an organization that you think, whoa, this person is an ideal candidate. Now let me see, how can I, can I, you know, 
begin a dialogue, begin a relationship with this person, uh, or maybe it's someone you identify and you've collected information on, like especially today in a world of uh, the online, you know, the amount of information available on the internet or s social media on individuals. We can pick somebody who we don't know and kind of develop a way, a, a pretext for contacting them, establishing a dialogue. And, and usually it takes more than just like a one-time conversation. You want to look at how can I get back and have multiple conversations with this individual, use elicitation skills that we've developed to really gain a lot of information, not only about them, but the organization they work for. Um, and then get to a point where you get them to undertake an action. And in most times in my case, it was waiting. They knew that they were they were they were involved with providing the information. They didn't know necessarily who I was working for, uh, but they knew that they were providing me with this information, helping me out with this information, based on developing that relationship with them, a trust, you know, amount of trust that they had in me, and they really wanted to help me. That's why in being ingratiating, you know, for me it was very important. People felt that they could trust me, and they wanted you know, to help me. It, it it this I know this isn't what you did, but it sounds to me like. The process of a romance scam, like you meet somebody and you tell them what they want to hear and you begin to, you know, uh, in a sense, pour your heart out or just be like, be honest with them. And eventually, like they trust and they believe in you. And before you know it, like in a romance scam, they're turning over money, right? Yeah. In, in your situation, they're turning over information or whatever that might be. Uh, it, does that parallel work or am I off base? No, no, you're, you're, you're not off base. Basically, it's, it's um, a, when you are assessing the individual, you're looking at them as a unique individual and what are, might be their wants and needs, what might be their motivations, what might be their vulnerabilities. And then you begin to look at, okay, how can I develop them and the relationship with them so that I know what buttons I can push and I know what I can offer them in exchange for their assistance based on what their, their mo respective motivations are. Right. So you, you try to satisfy whatever they need, like in a romance scheme, you know, the scammers are trying to satisfy that uh, loneliness uh, or romance that someone is looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, in those cases, though, the person pretty much gets burned almost mm -hmm. in all, all scenarios. Uh, in my experience, the individuals that that I work for, at least, and for the most part, at the end of the day, the individual uh, has developed a relationship where they are benefiting from it, and hopefully, they are they will they will benefit for a long time, and eventually, the relationship will be severed, all right. But the, that individual should be able to walk away, and, and with nothing detrimental happening to them. To the contrary, it's all it's been a win-win for us as an organization. And a win-win for them that because they've gotten something in return that's been beneficial to them. So, you know, this it doesn't it, it sounds similar to what I might see in the movies, but it's also different. So are you in a position to because I know you can't share a lot, but are you in a position position to share like an example of what that might look like? Like 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 what the what the what the end goal is, who the target is, and why. What you did to, I guess, socially engineer them, and how they provided you with what you needed. Like, I mean, let's just say, for example, you are, were targeting a senior government official in the ministry, okay, that had, definitely has access to something uh, to information that's considered foreign intelligence. It's, it's private, you know, it's closely held, it's non-public, um, and it really would meet some. Um, requirements that we have for a better understanding of what's going on in a particular country for in, under a particular administration or within that ministry. So that individual you, you can validate is a validated target. It's not that we assume that they have access. We find out through the initial um, dialogue with them, they in fact have that access. Okay, now we got to look at how can we develop that relationship with them so that we can get that individual to provide us with that information. And it may, could be a number of reasons. And, you know, most cases, most cases uh, around the world, it's going to be financial. Okay. Some people might do it from ideology. In, in the old days, especially with the, the, the Soviet, you know, the Cold War, there would be people that would cross over 
and do it for ideolo ideological reasons. They, they believed in, uh, in the United States. They believed in our system. They didn't like what was happening back home. They wanted to see if they could make a difference, right? And so there are people that, that will be motivated by ideology, but in most parts of the world, uh, it is financial, where they are receiving compensation for information that they are providing. And they might use that, that money for a number of different reasons. Maybe it can be packaged in, hey, you know, you, you want to you wanna be able to send your kids to college someday. This is a, you know, this is our funds that you can set aside for college or for buying a nicer home or for your retirement or for, you know, uh, you know luxuries. All right, all right, all right. So, so, so what you're saying then is, is that you were the guy that actually handed off brief briefcases with cash in them for information? Well, not briefcases per se. It might be envelopes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of like the candy man, right? I mean, it's transactional, yeah. but it's not only it's not only based on the money. I mean, most times if it's only based on money, it's probably going to go sideways. Mm. It's based on money is the million the motivation, but also the trust in the relationship that we're going to protect them, right? And also, it, it's a friendship, really, and a trust with the individual who, who recruited them and who handles them. I mean, they really enjoy dealing with you because you're probably the only person that knows what they're doing. Because they're not they telling their be, family, friends. They would be considered an asset. Yes. That's yes. movie stuff right there. Okay. So the, the target would be their boss. They are the asset. They're the medium for you no. to get that information. No, they are the target. I mean, the target, the ultimate target might be their, the organization that they work for, right? The information that's held in that organization. But yeah. they become the target individual, right? We refer to target. We, we typically refer to the individual that we are targeting. Once they are recruited and a relationship is established, then it's an asset. So would it be safe to say that uh, some of what you were engaged in over the years uh, was part of like the larger picture to secure American borders, to protect the homeland and or to get access to uh, other countries to stop, start something, to stop something? Like, would you say you're a little bit of all of that? Yes, absolutely. All of that. I mean, there's so many issues of interest to to the US government, not just US government, I mean, most governments have the same concerns, right? Whether it's to prevent terrorist activities, uh, whether it's to deal with, you know, counter proliferation uh, that might be taking place, whether it's, you know, negotiations, trade negotiations with other countries, uh, but understand your, you know, the adversary's capabilities from a military standpoint. I mean, uh, understand their economy and, and what it might be the main sources of income for their economy, all these things basically to understand uh, what's going on in, in uh, another country. Not all the countries are uh, the same level of interest, of course, there's gonna be prioritized uh, targets of interest, countries of interest. So now based on the 20 years that you spent in the CIA, um, your home base being what, Langley? Well, yeah, ultimately Langley, but I mean, I spent very little time in Langley. I, I spent most of my time uh, overseas in the field, you know, yeah. just like people say in the corporations, they prefer to be out, you know, overseas working in the, in the branch office uh, than working back at, at corporate because corporate is very different sometimes. Uh, no one likes to be working at corporate. And the, what do we call the missions, projects? Like what, what, what do you call each, I guess, the de deployment? What do you call that? Well, I mean, it's, it's each case, it's, you know, like law enforcement, it's a case or it's a for, for oh. military is a deployment for, you know, a spy well, programs. I mean, you have, you have programs and then within those, I mean, the program might be collection on uh, X, Y, Z, you know, collection on Iranians, collection, you know, collection on the nu Iranian nuclear program or collection on the, you know, um, the, the, the Russia. I mean, these are programs. And then within those programs, you're going to have budgets and you're going to have, Gotcha. Uh, areas of interest within those programs and you're going to you know recruit sources within those programs but yeah typically programs that's that's what it was called in and around the coffee uh in, in around the water cooler this is mm -hmm. my current program or this is the next program and so forth is that yes. correct mm -hmm. okay very interesting so the, the 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 stuff that you did um would it be would would, would the engagement the program 
and its results or its progress be something that we as a uh, or its results it would, would it be something that we as consumers would see in the news eventually like they in that you would have been a part of that maybe not by name of course but like you were a part of whatever that might have been uh that is sometimes that's very true uh i mean a lot of our and unfortunately a you know you usually when you hear something in the press that's attributable to uh to you know the government or the intelligence world is like oh they they screwed up there was a big failure and it gets a lot of prop it gets a lot of press right but the many successes which are so many more than the failures typically don't get they might be in the press but people they don't realize who was behind it right they don't realize uh, that we were involved and there's a lot of cases where yeah involved in, in, in incidences where things have come out in the press and say yeah you know and it turned out the way that we wanted it to uh we were involved but we were unable to to take out you know we, we it gotta be it can't be attributable because if it if some things become attributable to us it can go back and actually potentially put sources and methods at risk at risk so that's what we got to be really careful that's what kind of like irritates uh, some of us uh when people come out with books it could be very, very some people are putting out books just to, to, to talk and you know glorify the, what they did in a particular mission uh, you know, whether it's uh, Central Intelligence Agency or other, you know, Department of Defense units, you know, uh, the, the elite services like the SEALs, the, you know, et cetera, where an individual might come out with a book about, you know, how something went down, but people can also get concerned because that also reveals a methodology. We got to be very, very careful and not put things out in the press. And, and the same thing happens with the presidential administration. They might want to put something out in the press showing, hey, we, that was a victory for us, but at the same time, it shares with our adversaries information that can be very right. useful for them in the future. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we, we tend to, we, we, we got to resist that temptation of putting too much information out there regarding how we conduct these activities. Yeah, of course. I, I, I am uh, connected to someone who is um, considered uh, special operations in the um, U.S. military, who engages in... Um, in this case, uh, deployments that um, you and I, uh, or maybe you back in the day, but in general, the, the general public does not know what he does, where he does it, who in many cases are his target. Uh, and he can't even tell, he can't tell anybody. He has to keep everything under wraps uh, for uh, all the reasons that you mentioned. And um, this is somebody who essentially will go to places and do things that you and I will never, ever, ever do. Uh, and uh, hopefully he honestly survives it and lives to it, uh, you know, based on the type of work that he's doing or I guess deployments. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. So tell us about your book. So you mentioned, you know, certain, you know, authors out there that have a, a history with government agencies and special t operations situations, programs in your case, uh, writing, you know, tell-all type books with, in some cases, they probably shouldn't be doing. What's your book about? Tell us about it. It's kind of a segue to what we were talking about earlier, that uh, some of the things I describe in the book is sort of methodologies, right? When, in regard to how a human hackers, because I consider myself a human hacker, we as intelligence officers would target individuals to become potential sources or assets, uh, utilize this methodology. And none of it is is secret. I mean, this is out there. You can find bits and pieces of that. But I put it together in such a way that um, the layperson can really understand the methodology that is utilized by an intelligence officer and how it's utilized by other um, human hackers who are uh, who are targeting individuals to breach the security of the organizations that they work for. So I wrote I wrote it more for the individual who's not really involved in intelligence. But for the layperson to understand how you know the methodology that's utilized and how they could be approached as a target of interest as an insider because of the organization that they work for so it's really trying to help prepare educate them provide security awareness to protect both themselves and their organizations from uh, from targeting by threat actors Gotcha. So your book essentially kind of breaks down a bit more about your process and how those that are employees of an organization, even company officers, frontline employees, managers, supervisors and up, how they could be targeted. And you've dissected that for them so they understand what it 
looks like when they're being targeted, what those methodologies are, and uh, essentially how to, I guess, anticipate it should they uh, start to get a sense that they're being targeted. Does that all make sense? That all makes perfect sense. And for those that are not familiar with the name, uh, it's it's called Confessions of a CIA Spy, The Art of Human Hacking. Confessions of a CIA Spy, The Art of Human Hacking. Hold on one second. Uh, confessions of a CIA Spy. All right. And this is you right here, top of um, top of search. Uh, that is Peter Warmka. Seventy-one ratings at basically, for all intents and purposes, five stars. Good for you, Peter. Thank you very much. I mean, I, I enjoyed writing it, and I got, I've gotten a lot of really excellent feedback from people that say that um, it, it, it's an easy read. It makes a lot of sense to them. Some companies even with, you know, some of the, the best compliments I get, the best compliments I get when people say that they are buying these books also for their adult children. Think about it, right? They think that this could be really useful to other family members. And then I also get individuals that tell me that they are making this required reading for their employees in the companies where they work. I mean, these, to me, that, to me that's a great endorsement uh, when people are, are, are recommending this to other people to read. So very and pleased. Yeah, that's that's great. So essentially any company that's providing any level of security awareness training, whether it's phishing simulation training or bringing in a, a, a trainer or a speaker, somebody like you or I, um, the information in the book is designed to support all of that, to give them that much more insight to the 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 methods, the tactics that um, somebody like yourself, a good guy would use uh, and or somebody like uh, a fisher or a scammer or a romance scammer would use and it's kind of dissecting all of that correct that is correct i mean it goes into uh, a lot there's a lot of stories in there as well to kind of like illustrate it, to illustrate these uh, these methods mm -hmm. um i, I it, people find it fascinating and I'm, I'm in the process of actually writing another book I, i'm not going to say too much about it i don't want to get the everybody you know waiting for the book because uh, it takes a little bit of time as as you can imagine. Uh, some of you might not know, but uh, this book, anybody that works for the CIA or has worked for the CIA who's gonna publish something has to get it approved by the CIA. There's a publication review board. So it was submitted to, to them. Uh, some of it was struck out. I had to make some edits and make some changes because they feel that felt that some of the information was overly sensitive. So it, it's been totally approved blessed by them, and uh, I, I won't get in any trouble for releasing it, nor will they, readers get in any trouble for reading it. Now, um, uh, since your retirement as a, uh, uh, I don't even know why I did air quotes with that one, sit with, because uh, you, but, well, I guess why I do know, because you're still working actually, but maybe not for the CIA. What do you do with your expertise now? Like what, besides, you know, being a successful author, um, how else do you spend your time? Well, I established Counterintelligence Institute about two years ago, and for the purpose of working with organizations, whether they be, you know, for-profit corporations or or nonprofit, uh, or even municipalities, state government, federal government, or all organizations that that could be uh, targeted uh, for breaches by human hackers, and so provide, I, I do a lot of speaking at, at events, at conferences. I also provide training events, a, workshops for companies. And I also provide a, a number of different types of services like uh, phishing simulation program, uh, support, uh, red teaming audits, look at the vulnerabilities that organi organizations might have. Uh, but the big part for me, the most, what I enjoy the most is the educational piece, the security awareness piece. Yes, uh, the, the the boots on the ground, how people are swindled in social engineering, how that all works. So yeah, this is um, let me I, I just uh, pulled up your website here. This is pretty good stuff right here. Um, pop up with uh, the book. Uh, that's great. And uh, click the screen here, and there you are. Security awareness training. Learn about 
security breaching from a former CIA spy delivered through courses online, live events on Clyde's site. Uh, really great stuff, Peter. So for those of you uh, who are just tuning in, we're speaking with Peter Warmke. He's uh, a former uh, or retired uh, CIA spy, like the real Dale, working in uh, spending a lot of time in Central America and overseas via the Middle East. And he is uh, my co-presenter. As you probably know, I am Robert Cicliano. I provide security awareness training with Protect Now LLC. And Peter is, uh, and I'm the security guy, and Peter is the CIA spy. So uh, that's a, a bit about his story. And uh, Peter, so you really are a, a, a true master when it comes down to it. Like you, you're absolutely the real deal. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I still learned though, right? Because the uh, everything is constantly evolving. Human psychology hasn't really changed too much, but the mechanisms to to get to them, to manipulate them, have changed. Technology changes, right? So there's always there's always this game is always uh, evolving, and uh, so that that's the reason why I love to still be be involved because it's uh, it's always more still more to learn. So uh, that's excellent, Peter. Uh, thank you for all of that. Uh, so we are uh, the security guy and the CIA spy pod broadcast. Uh, we uh, are on, you know, Apple and uh, all of the socials uh, live via uh, uh, stream once or twice uh, a week. And uh, so tune in, look for us, uh, sign up for our newsletter. You can see me and my team online at protectnowllc.com. And uh, Peter is at, hold on one second, let me get right back to your website. Peter is at, why don't you uh, tell them anyways, Peter? It is counterintelligence-institute.com. And Peter is a two times uh, TEDx speaker. Uh, and uh, what we discussed today, his website, my website, will be in the show notes, which uh, will be published uh, via our newsletter. Head over to protectnowllc.com and sign up for our newsletter and you will get uh, our feed every couple of weeks, know when the next broad pod broadcast is gonna be. And uh, Peter, you have last words? Well, thank you very much, Robert. Enjoyed, enjoyed speaking with you and everybody just keep safe out there. Uh, there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of angst especially now with what's going on with the, the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. Yes. Um, I mean, the history has been filled with this. This is just another chapter, you know, a, just do your part, take care of, take care of yourself and take care of others. Yeah. And be nice to each other. You know, there's a lot of angry people out there. Just be nice to each other. Be patient with people. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Robert. You take care.